Hi, everybody. Welcome to this next video from the Wisconsin First Detector Network. Today, we're joined by PJ Leash from the UW Insect Diagnostic Lab, and he'll be giving us an update on brown marmorated stink bug. All right. Pleasure to be here, folks, talking about um, a particular invasive insect that, if you live in the southern part of the state, um, needs very little introduction to you. It's something that's been around for several years, but I'm going to talk about some of the, the common patterns we've seen both in the country and in Wisconsin over the last couple of years, and also some future directions of what we're looking at um, in the state. So just a quick review of the brown marmorated stink bug. This is an exotic invasive species. It's originally native to portions of Eastern Asia, uh, locations such as China, for example. Uh, and it's been in the U.S. since the 1990s. Um, and it showed up first place in the country in Pennsylvania. So we'll look at a map in the next slide and when we see the national distribution, the mid-Atlantic states really are having the most problems with this insect. It's relatively new in the Midwest, um, but we're starting to see some issues over time. And why can brown marmorated stink bug be such a major problem? Well, several reasons. It can feed on a very, very wide range of plants, including field crops like corn and soybeans, vegetable crops like tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, and so on. It can be a major concern in fruit production, in orchard settings, and in vineyards. And this insect can also feed on ornamental plants, so it can feed on an awful lot of things. The main reason we're getting concerns and complaints at this point because of this insect is very similar to box elder bugs and Asian lady beetles. Brown marmorate sink bug likes to sneak indoors in the fall when it's looking for an, a sheltered overwintering location. And so they'll sneak in in October or so, and they can be active during the winter months. And when we look at the national distribution, two main points I want to make about this. The first is that, again, those mid-Atlantic states, places like Pennsylvania and Virginia and Maryland, that's the part of the country where brown marmorage sink bug was first found, and those states are highlighted in red, where we've had our most significant problems, both structural concerns when the insects sneak into buildings, but also agricultural concerns where the insects are causing harm to vegetable field crops and uh, fruit crops as well. Then we've got a number of states in orange where we're starting to get some agricultural problems. At this point, Wisconsin is shaded in yellow. We have some structural nuisance concerns. We haven't had many agricultural concerns, but that likely will change over time. Um, the second point I want to make about this map is that Brown marmorate sink bug has pretty much been found across the country, at least detected. There's a handful of states, mostly in the western U.S., places like Montana, Wyoming, where we haven't found it yet, but given enough time, it will probably show up in those locations as well. And just a quick review of how to identify the brown marmorate stink bug. They are brownish in color. They have a distinct shield-shaped body, and they're about half inch long or just over half an inch um, when I measure them typically. A couple other features that help identify them. At the back end of the insect, there's an alternating checkerboard pattern, this alternating uh, pattern of light and dark squares, although some other insects can have a similar pattern. Uh, the most distinctive feature, though, of this insect, when you look at the antennae, which are entirely brownish, except there are two pale bands, and that is a very unique identifying feature for this insect. If we look at brown marmorated stink bug compared to some of our native brown stink bugs. And in Wisconsin, the Great Lakes region, we've got several dozen species of native stink bugs. On the left-hand picture here, we've got a native brown stink bug from the genus Euschistus. They tend to be a little bit smaller, although not always. Um, but in general, brown marmorated tends to consistently be over half an inch long. The native ones are often a little bit smaller. But again, the most distinctive feature of brown marmorated stink bug were the two pale bands on the antennae. When we look at this native brown stink bug, we see a different color pattern. The antennae are entirely dark, kind of more of a reddish brown color towards the attachment point on the head, with the tips of the antennae being brownish. So that's an important way to tell them apart. A quick review of brown marmorated stink bug biology. Um, in the Midwest, we are basically seeing one generation per year. So the adult insects have snuck into buildings in the fall. They hunker down for the winter, and then they emerge again in the spring months. Um, once they emerge, they are mating. Females are laying eggs. Um, in the picture here on the right-hand portion of the slide, we see a cluster of eggs from brown marmorated stink bug. You might get clusters of 20 to 30-ish eggs. And overall, a female can lay 
over 200 to 250 eggs in her lifetime. Once the eggs hatch, the juvenile brown marmorate stink bugs will go through five stages or instars and get progressively larger. And as they get larger, they start looking more and more like the adult insects. Then they've got sucking mouth parts, kind of like a mosquito, except they're using those mouth parts to feed on plant and suck uh, fluids out of the plants. Now looking at Wisconsin and the history we have in the state here, um, we had our first detection of brown marmorate stink bug back in 2010. And then things were really quiet for about five years. And during that time, 2010 to 2015-ish, we would get two to three reports a year. Um, so it was really pretty quiet. Once we hit 2015, the population seemed to have increased to a point where we were starting to get a lot more reports. So 2015, we had about three dozen cases in the state. In 2016, we were having reports of juveniles being spotted. We observe mating adults. So that was a really important year for us. That told us that this insect is indeed established and reproducing in the state. And in 2016, we had 50 or more reports in Wisconsin. And then looking at 2017 and into 2018, um, this insect has increased even more in abundance. At this point in early 2018 for the insect diagnostic lab, about 20% of all the insects I've handled so far this year have been brown marmorated stink bugs. And there's really three hot spots in the state, um, Dane County, where Madison is located, and then Rock County, Janesville and Beloit in particular, are some of the locations in Wisconsin with the highest populations of this insect to date. But also other locations in southeastern Wisconsin, Racine, Kenosha, Milwaukee, Waukesha, we've had lots and lots of reports there. And then the third hot spot would be the Fox River Valley, basically the western side of Lake Winnebago, Oshkosh on up to Green Bay. We've had lots of reports from that corridor as well. Um, so insects have been very, very common in some parts of the state. And just to illustrate that a little bit more on this slide, the picture on the left, this was an example of um, I went grocery shopping one evening in Madison, Wisconsin and pulled a box off the shelf. And sure enough, there was a brown marmorated stink bug on it. We are getting more reports of individuals finding larger numbers of these insects overwintering in those, their homes. In some cases, dozens, uh, in other cases, potentially hundreds of these insects, whereas a few years ago, it would have been simply two or three being found indoors. So numbers are definitely increasing in the state. The main concern um, and the main complaint I've been getting about this insect does relate to um, it being a structural nuisance pest or problem. Again, when the insects sneak indoors in the fall, they're looking for a sheltered overwintering spot. And so they often get into attics and garages, and they can get into living quarters as well. But they'll sneak in through cracks and crevices on the side of the building. Um, and along those lines, physical exclusion is really one of the best tactics that we can go about preventing them from getting into a structure in the first place. If you were to inspect the outside of your home or other building, find those cracks and crevices, maybe around window or door frames that don't seal up as well as they should, look at weather stripping and things like that. But if we physically seal things up and keep them out in the first place, we won't have problems during the winter months. So that's one way to go about it. Once they get indoors, we've kind of lost the battle um, because it, there's not a whole lot of things we can do once they're into a home um, other than physical removal. So hand picking, if you get an occasional one here or there, catch it in Tupperware and throw it outside, something along those lines. Um, and also, if you had large numbers of them, you could potentially vacuum them up. Just be aware they are indeed stink bugs, so they can release a rather unpleasant smell. If you get it on your bare hands, for example, it's kind of hard to wash off as well. So just a heads up about that. Um, one other thing that can be done, um, especially if you live in a, a house where there's lots of nooks and crannies where these insects can sneak in, we will often use residual insecticides in the fall to prevent them from getting indoors. And the insecticides that are typically used do two things. They have some repellent properties. So if the insects contact it, they will leave and go elsewhere. Or if they contact it long enough, it's going to kill them outright. We use the same type of insecticides for other structural invaders, things like box elder bugs and Asian lady beetles. If you're looking for additional information about this insect, uh, UW Extension does have a couple of really good fact sheets. Uh, on the UW Extension horticulture website, hort.uwex.edu, there is a two-page fact sheet, um, XHT 1236, 
If you'd like additional information, there's a longer fact sheet out there, about five or six pages long, through the UW Extension Learning Store website. There also is a national website uh, with additional information about the brown marmorated stink bug, www.stopbmsb.org. So that's another very useful website. Now just a little bit more of a glimpse into what will be going on in the state, hopefully in the next few years. Uh, so my colleagues involved on the research side of things are looking to do some more monitoring projects, especially in the agricultural sector where we haven't had significant problems yet but we likely will over time. Um, my colleague Christelle Goudeau, a fruit crop entomologist, and her team, for example, are specifically looking at monitoring for this insect in orchard settings because this pest can cause significant problems in apple settings and other fruits as well. So we've got some projects going on with monitoring for it. There's also been some work proposed on biocontrol, use of parasitic wasps to control these insects. Um, some of my same colleagues would like to do a survey just to see what type of biocontrol beneficial predators and parasites are out there in the state on a more national basis. There's some work being done with a teeny tiny little wasp pictured here on the left, commonly called the samurai wasp. And these little wasps are just a millimeter or two long. And in that picture in the center, we see one emerging from a stink bug egg. These wasps uh, parasitize the egg. They consume it from the inside as larvae, and then they emerge as new adult wasps. This is a species originally from Asia. It has, for whatever reason, um, accidentally been introduced into the U.S. There had been some other efforts to purposefully introduce it, but scientists are trying to figure out where exactly it is in the country and what type of impact it's having on brown marmorated stink bugs. So that's some research that's going to be going on in the next few years. Now lastly, how can you help, especially in Wisconsin? Um, one of the main things I'm interested in is monitoring that spread of this insect in the state. And if we look again at those hot spots in Wisconsin, places like Dane County and Rock County down towards Janesville and Bloyd, we know the insect is here already. We've had lots and lots of reports, as well as southeastern Wisconsin, Waukesha, Milwaukee areas. We know the insect has a very strong foothold there. And then again, that Fox River Valley, the western side of Lake Winnebago, Oshkosh on up to Green Bay, we know the insect is well established there. So we're not as interested in reports from those areas where we are really interested in hearing about new sightings is more of these outlying areas. Um, counties where we have only had a few records or counties where this insect hasn't been detected yet. So that on this map would be counties in yellow where we have suspicions the insect might be present or the counties in white. If you'd like to report this insect, it is listed in the Gledden uh, app, Great Lakes Early Detection Network uh, app, which you can use uh, both on uh, iOS or Apple and uh, Android devices. So that's available out there as well. Or you can get in contact with me by email or through my website, which I'll list on the next slide. So again, if you hear of any additional reports or find a suspicious stink bug in outlying parts of the state, I'd love to hear about it. Again, here's my contact information by email, and the website for the UW Insect Diagnostic Lab is listed here as well. Great. Thanks, PJ. All right, so you just talked about uh, options for reporting, and one of them being getting in touch with you via email. Uh, if people email you, do you want pictures in their email or any other information? Great question. So um, pictures can certainly be helpful, and especially if you've got a high-resolution camera like a smartphone camera, um, if you can get a nice, clear shot, I should be able to identify if it's brown marmorated or another insect from that. So that can be very helpful if you send that to me by email. Also, I'd love to know um, what county you're in. If you tell me the town you're in as well, that's great, but um, we're trying to keep track of this on a county-by-county -county basis, so that information would be really helpful. If for some reason you email me pictures and I can't quite tell due to the angle or clarity of the picture, I might uh, request that you send in a physical specimen and I can easily send you an email with that information. Otherwise, if you would just like to send a specimen to me uh, in the mail to begin with, all of those instructions can be found on the website for the UW Insect Diagnostic Lab. Earlier in the presentation, you talked about a turning point in Wisconsin being when juvenile brown marmorated stink bugs were detected. Have juveniles been detected in the three hotspots that you mentioned or in other parts of the state yet? 
Great question. So overall, we haven't had that many reports of juveniles. The vast majority of our reports have been adult brown murmurated stink bugs, especially once they've snuck indoors in the fall and then during the winter months. We have had reports of juveniles mostly from areas like Dane County, um, so south central Wisconsin. We've also had some from southeastern Wisconsin locations like Waukesha County, for example. So there have been some detections of juveniles, but by and far, uh, the vast majority of reports have been adult brown murmurated stink bugs. Are juveniles easy to detect, or do they look similar enough to adults that somebody might be able to identify them and report them? So it would depend a little bit on the actual juvenile stage that they're in. Um, when they're very small, just out of the egg, um, the insects are going to be about an eighth of an inch long, and they could easily be overlooked, and they're going to be hiding on plant leaves and, and other plant materials. So unless you're specifically looking for them or, or inspecting garden plants, you probably wouldn't bump into them. As they get progressively larger, the juveniles start to look more and more like the adults. Um, sometimes the juveniles that are a little bit older you can find on structures as well as the adults. You might encounter them in that location, but in most cases, if you do spot them, you'll probably be spotting the adult stages. You also talked a bit about brown marmorated stink bug being a nuisance in our homes. Obviously, they're stinky, but do they cause any other problems once they get into a home, such as structural damage or anything of that kind? Yes, that's a great question. The good news is that other than smelling bad and being kind of creepy crawly, they're really pretty harmless. Um, brown mermaid stink bug itself, when it sneaks into a building, it really wants to hunker down and save its energy and then leave again in the spring and go out to hang out on plants. So indoors, they don't have food to feed on because they're plant feeders. They're not going to be reproducing indoors. It's just not great conditions for them. They don't feed on blood, so they're really not going to be biting people or pets. They can smell bad, but that's about it. We've gotten some great information from PJ here today, and of course, check out the resources that he mentioned if you're interested in learning more about brown marmorated stink bug. We should mention if you choose to report brown marmorated stink bug with the Gledon app, you can always get tutorials for that right on the Wiften website. But with that, we'd like to thank PJ again for joining us, and feel free to contact the Diagnostic Lab with further questions and send in those reports if you are in one of the counties that we don't have reports yet. Thank you for watching this video from the Wisconsin First Detector Network. To learn more about our network or to access additional information about invasive species in Wisconsin, please visit our website or contact us.